Our top story on the show today is the spine-chilling murder in the national capital. A 28-year-old man called Aftab Poonawala strangulated his live-in partner after a fight and then chopped her body into 35 pieces. He then brought a 300-litre fridge, stored her body parts there. To hide the stench, he would use agarbatti or incense sticks. Aftab then disposed of the evidence that his body parts over 18 days scattering them all over the Meheroli forest. The crime has come to light six months after the actual incident took place. Now, Delhi cops have really revealed that Aftab Poonawala, who used to work as a chef, and his partner Shraddha were both employed at a call centre in Mumbai. The couple fell in love and came to Delhi after their families opposed their relationship. It was shortly after coming to Delhi on May 18th that Aftab allegedly murdered Shraddha after a raging fight over marriage. Shraddha wanted to get married, Aftab didn't. The Delhi police says Aftab was inspired by an American crime series, Dexter, where a forensic technician who works for the police by day and kills, and, kills and murders by night. Now to the point, how was it possible for Poonawala to hide Shraddha's murder for six long months? For one, Shraddha was estranged from her family over the relationship. It was in September that Shraddha's friend told her family, to be specific, her brother, that Shraddha's phone had been switched off for two months. In November, her father, which means Shraddha's father, files a complaint with the Mumbai police. The case is then transferred to the Delhi police after her last location was found to be Delhi. On November 8th, when Shraddha's father came to Delhi to check on her and found her flat to be locked, he filed a complaint of kidnapping with the Meheroli police. He also told the police that Aftab used to beat up Shraddha regularly. The knife used by Aftab for the brutal crime has still not been recovered. He has now been sent to five days of police custody. Uh, the murder happened in mid of May as of now what we have. Uh, then gradually what the boy did was he chopped the body to pieces and stored them in fridge. And later on, with, with time over months, he disposed of the body parts in various parts of the area around the uh, basically his house. Yeah. So, uh, as per the initial investigation, what is the motive that you have been zeroed upon? The motive currently, what we have is that it was a live in issue basically. They had a relationship fight, and this thing got out of control, and he killed the girl. Let me go across to our reporters who are tracking the story for us. Bhavtosh is live with us from Delhi and Shivani is live with us from Mumbai. Uh, Bhavtosh, I'm coming to you first. I want to understand from you how the case was finally cracked. Yes, the girl's father, which means Shraddha's father, had come to Delhi. He finds the Mehruli house locked. He files a kidnapping case against Aftab. What happens from there on? How does the police discover the gruesome details that have now emerged in the last 24 hours? Ashriya, uh, the police, in fact, did a backward uh, investigation in this case, uh, which means that they started tracking the case uh, from May 8th onwards. They first went to the place where they were staying. In fact, uh, uh, because of the constant fight uh, between the two of them, uh, they, uh, the couple decided that they would go and visit uh, various hill stations uh, up north. And after visiting various hill stations, this, uh, this, uh, they, in fact, stayed uh, in a hotel in uh, Pahar Ganj uh, for a day. That's on 8th of May. And for 10 days, uh, they stayed in a hostel uh, in, uh, in South Delhi. Uh, it was only later that uh, when he had rented a, a, a house uh, in Mehroli that this entire macabre crime uh, was in fact planned uh, by uh, Aftab. Uh, it was here that he decided how to kill uh, Shraddha. He strangled her and uh, once he strangled her, uh, she died. And then he, in fact, got a cleaver. That's what uh, sources within Delhi police had uh, told us, that he uh, severed her body parts. Uh, he kept the body parts uh, in a refrigerator, the visuals uh, of which we are playing. And then uh, over a period of six months, uh, he disposed of uh, the bo uh, body parts in a, for a forested area. Now, why he did so, as you rightly said, that uh, the couple uh, met on a social uh, media app or a dating app uh, sometime between 2018 and 2019. Now, the family of Shraddha, in fact, was uh, against this relationship because the couple uh, were of different religion. And uh, But Shraddha, in fact, said that uh, she will go in for this relationship because she is a, 
uh, she is a mature girl and she uh, she would have this relationship now she virtually uh, in fact had no uh, uh, contact with her family members she had in fact uh, uh, was in touch with her fam mm. a few of her uh, relatives uh, with her sister and brother and few of her friends now between 2019 onwards she started pressurizing uh, aftab to uh, go or uh, go for a legal marriage uh, which uh, aftab in fact uh, uh, for some reason or pretext he denied this and then uh, because of this constant fight and because of this uh, constant uh, 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 continuously the, the couple had this fight he in fact decided to uh, to murder her this is what the police are saying that this is but well, this is just the start of uh, investigation remember he was in fact arrested only yesterday the police have sought 5 uh, days of custody to understand what hmm. exactly went uh, and what in fact uh, what forced him to uh, carry out this uh, brutal crime uh, over a period of 6 uh, months he in fact uh, disposed of her body parts none of these body parts have so far been recovered even, as you rightly said even the weapon has so far not been found uh, he has said that uh, what inspired him or what uh, mm. in, in fact uh, inspired him to carry out this uh, brutal crime is uh, ott uh, uh, series that he had seen is dexter but uh, the police uh, are still saying that it's hard to believe that just by watching uh, dexter that he could have committed this crime True. but he committed this crime on his own and uh, because uh, shraddha was not watch uh, was not in touch with anyone and the fact that she was not posting anything on social media mm. her family members her daughter, uh, her sister as well as her friends were the first one to, uh, uh, to be suspicious and they were the ones who in fact got in touch uh, with her father that to me is the most shocking you know bhavtosh that to me is the most shocking that here is a girl who suddenly goes missing and she's missing for 6 months and no one notices the neighbors don't notice her workplace doesn't say anything it is a friend who in september calls up the family to say wani you are joining us from mumbai it's a friend who calls up the family to say look and this happens in september that look shradha's phone has been shut for 2 months and maybe you know maybe there is something wrong that the family decides maybe there is something wrong but you know september ends uh I All right, uh, stay with us. The Palghar DCP, I believe, is speaking on the case, Shivani. Just stay with us. Let's quickly listen into what he's saying. Let me complete it for you. But they didn't say anything. So we have sent out a team to the missing people, and our special officer gave them the information. Our officer has all the girl's and the boy's both the mobile details, hmm. bank details, all all analyzed. And we have found out that they are living in Delhi. They have their home location. सब विश्लेषण किया तो झगड़ा हुआ नहीं सब स्टोरी बताया उन्होंने की जॉब के साथ में जॉब करते थे दोनों दोस्ती हुआ था प्यार हुआ था लिव रहते थे लेकिन झगड़ा हुआ उसके लिए वो छोड़ के चले गए ऐसा बताया था फिर हम लोगों ने हमारे सीनियर ऑफिसर से सब जो सुपीरियर ऑफिसर हमारे उनसे बातचीत करके यूनिवर्सिटी बारे में ट्रांसफर करना डिसीजन लिया और फिर वो ट्रांसफर यूनिवर्सिटी करने के लिए हमारा जो स्पेशल ऑफिसर था उनको वहाँ भेज दिया था तो उनके आफ्ताब के बिहेवियर सस्पेशियस लगा वो टाइम पे जब बिल्कुल बिल्कुल हमारा ऑफिसर फिर हमारा जो ऑफिसर कैसे थे जो नहीं हर टाइम उसका स्टेटमेंट अलग था तो हमारा ऑफिसर उधर दिल्ली गया था वो ऑफिसर ने उधर वहाँ पे जाके भी उनका वापस एक बार लोकेशन वहाँ का एड्रेस वेरीफाई किया और वहाँ का एड्रेस लोकेशन उसका रहने का रेसिडेंस कंफर्म हुआ कि वह यहाँ यही रहता था यही एड्रेस है वो इस पर हमारे वहाँ के जो सीनियर ऑफिसर है वहाँ जाके वो ब्रिप किया हमारे जो ऑफिसर गए थे उन्होंने फिर वो लोकल पुलिस ने मेहरोली पुलिस ने तो वहाँ पे लोकल पुलिस जाके रिपोर्ट किया फिर हमारा ऑफिसर हमारा टीम स्पेशल ऑफिसर वहाँ का ऑफिसर और टीम वो एड्रेस पे गया वो एड्रेस पे वो लड़के को पुलिस थाने पुलिस ने लेके आया और फिर आगे इंक्वायरी करके जो भी इंक्वायरी रिविल हुआ उसके बारे में पिताजी को बोला के कंप्लेन दाखिल किया और उसका भी वो लोगों ने अरेस्ट किया है और कुछ आफ्ताब ने कुछ जानकारी दी कुछ जिसमें कुछ क्लू निकला ऐसा कुछ था जो क्वेश्चनिंग में जो हुआ इधर इधर जो क्वेश्चनिंग हुआ जो आपने सस्पेक्ट किया कि हमारा जो पुलिस ऑफिसर गया था स्पेशल ऑफिसर है हमारा ऑफिसर वहाँ का जो लोकल ऑफिसर है और उनका टीम वो ज्वाइंट उन्होंने ज्वाइंटली उसका इन्वेस्ट किया है जो भी बात रही वो दिल्ली पुलिस बताएगा आपको और सर आफ्ताब के पेरेंट्स के बारे में कुछ उनकी उनके साथ कोई पूछताछ हुई बिकॉज आफ्ताब का भी घर इधर ही था ना वो टाइम पे आफ्ताब के पिताजी को आफ्ताब को बुलाया था हम लोगों ने Okay. लेकिन अब तब कैसा आता हुआ लड़का ये वो भी साथ में दो साल से उधर रहता लड़के साथ रहता था वो अलग था पेरेंट्स साथ हाँ. नहीं रहता था दोनों पेरेंट्स के दे हैड कट ऑफ टाइज विद पेरेंट्स यस ओके
All right. So, so here you go. So that's the uh, senior police inspector of uh, Manikpur Police Station right here in Vasai. Palgar. In fact, this is where the missing person's complaint was lodged a, a, a month ago, in fact, and following which, of course, they had interrogated, they had questioned um, Aftab, and they did find his answer suspicious. Okay, Shivani, you're joining us from Mumbai. We just heard Radhika speaking to the police inspector who was the one who had filed that complaint against Aftab. In fact, called him into questioning as well. Just give us uh, more details on this Palghar angle. Uh, Aftab was from Palghar, is it? Which is why the missing complaint that I'm assuming that the family, the girl's family, which means Shraddha's family had filed, was in Palghar. Just explain this to us. Uh, well, here, uh, Shreya, we have to understand that 2018 is a time when Shraddha passed from the BMM graduation in the uh, College of Vasai. And in fact, uh, he okay. was also, Afta was also a residence of Vasai itself. And that's how they connected on social media side they became friends they started meet, uh, meeting each other being in the very same area and then they started working and how this is how they developed their friendship and that's why in 2019 she shifted with Aftab in a living relationship first they started staying in Vasai itself then they shifted in Navi Mumbai later again they shifted themselves in Palghar and last destination was in Delhi and that is why Palghar becomes very important location because there are three different location in which Shraddha and Aftab have stayed together and and that is why cops have notified all of those places. Reiki have been done, notifications have been done, statement of the people of those particular Palgar and Navi Mumbai area have also been recorded. And that is why the crime development, the planning took place in Palgar to which it was executed in Delhi, we can say so. As of now, the case which was registered of missing and kidnapping by the family member, by father, he also in the statement particularly mentioned in the FIR clearly that he had also heard that Shraddha was beaten brutally several times and that was mentioned on those particular uh, statement based uh, police had recorded statement of Aftab and not only once or twice but eight times Aftab changed his statements which led the suspicious part uh, in this particular investigation. So no, what are you telling me here Shivani? Are you telling me here in the six months since Aftab had committed the crime and Bhaptosh come in here if you have more details to this in six months uh, that Aftab had committed the crime May 18th is when the murder takes place. In Palghar, when was the complaint lodged? By who was it lodged? And all this while, the body parts that you are telling me are in the fridge in that flat in Meroli and Aftab travels to Palghar to, uh, you know, to, uh, after he's summoned by the police to depose before them. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Shriya, adding to what uh, Shivani has said, uh, remember uh, there was no contact uh, or, uh, or Shraddha has in fact uh, ended all kind of contacts uh, uh, with her family members and even this is uh, what the father has said uh, in the FIR that was filed by the father. He has admitted that uh, there was no relationship between uh, Shraddha and the family members from 2019 onwards and uh, that's what uh, Shivani is saying that the family virtually ended all kind of but relationship between them uh, yeah, so from but, but 2019 then, onwards Bhaftos, uh, the family then the question is Bhaftos, then the question is who filed this complaint in Palghar Shivani yes. would you have uh, who filed this complaint in Palghar and when was this complaint filed and when did Aftab actually come all the way to Palghar to depose before the police Well, here, interestingly, just it's just been a month and more than that time, like less than two months when uh, Shraddha's father, in fact, filed this particular complaint of missing and kidnapping of a daughter. That too, after okay. uh, Shraddha's brother received a call from Shraddha's okay. best friend, who was constantly in touch with Shraddha her college days and it was her only who explained the family that Shraddha was beaten up, her uh, living relationship partner was turning violent which was not the case when the relationship started initially and after that she informed the brother that from past two months of time Shraddha is not in communication and not at all active on social media which uh, because of which the father also in fact went to Delhi to find out about her daughter later he came to Vasai and filed this particular complaint and on that particular complaint basis police calls uh, Aftab to record his statement and that is when we saw that he came back all the way from Delhi okay. to Palgar. He was re residing here and recorded his statement eight times with eight different versions. Okay, and, and, and that means 
and that means that while he had murdered her, all the while that Shraddha's body was chopped up into pieces and kept in that 30 liter fridge, Aftab had come to Palghar and he had spoken to the police there and changed his statement, statements at least eight times. But since then, to now, Bhavtosh, uh, it is only yesterday that he was arrested. Isn't that odd? Yes, uh, Shia, remember, yes, uh, Shia, in fact, uh, what has happened is that the police was treating it as a case of missing. Uh, he, in fact, said that uh, he had a fight with uh, his uh, friend and uh, the friend uh, could have gone missing. He admitted that, uh, yes, uh, the couple had a fight, but uh, the couple had, in fact, tried to mend the relationship. They had gone to various hill stations that he had, in fact, uh, met her and that they had visited various hill stations that he had gone to Delhi, that they had stayed in a hotel in Delhi. And then subsequently he had said that uh, he is uh, with her in Delhi. Now, what is uh, interesting here is that the police believed his version in Mumbai and subsequently they continued investigating the case. Uh, the Delhi police on its part uh, started investigating this case uh, seriously. When they did a backward integration as far as this case is concerned, when they started uh, investigating this case uh, through okay. mobile phone uh, uh, details, when they found that he was in fact uh, staying in Pahargan for one day, then he moved to a, host, uh, host, uh, to a hotel in South Delhi for 10 days. And then the time that he spent uh, in this rented accommodation for 15 days. Now, it was in this, uh, uh, in this uh, rented accommodation that he purchased uh, this fridge. And when the sustained integration happened, where he broke down and admitted, yes, he strangled his uh, friend, that is Shraddha. And then he uh, severed the body parts into 35 body parts so that he can dispose of okay. uh, the body parts in a uh, forested area. Now, okay. Even the investigating officer to whom Mira now spoke, they, have, they are also very baffled and shocked by the macabre nature of the crime that has taken place uh, in the capital. Okay. Abhavtosh, we leave it there. Thank you very much. Shivani, thank you very much. Between the two of you, you have given us an entire sequence of events for us to understand clearly how this crime was committed, when it was committed, and why for the last six months no one had a whiff of what had happened despite the fact that the Palghar police had called Aftab for questioning and he had changed his statement there at least eight times. We'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much. Uh, joined by Swati Maliwal of the Delhi Commission of Women, someone who is uh, putting out a show cause notice to the Delhi police. Swati, thank you very much for your time here on Mirror Now. The crime that we are seeing on our screens right now is disturbing at multiple levels. For you, what is the scariest aspect of it? I think the scariest aspect is the fact, the way, the manner in which this girl was murdered. She was hacked to death and there were 35 pieces that her body was ripped apart in. And one after the other, these pieces were first stored in a fridge and then later they were disposed of by this man in different parts of Delhi. I don't think I've across a more horrifying case as far as murder goes. I, it, it's really, really, really shocking. The other shocking aspect is that this incident happened six months back and there was not even a whisper of the same. So this girl dies, she dies a brutal death and nobody gets to know about it for six months. For six months, this man was able to get away with it. I think that is really shocking. And I've issued a notice to the Delhi police because I want to understand under what circumstances did this happen? How can it be that a girl just disappears into thin air and nobody gets to know about it? But the Delhi police got the case only in November. The girl had been dead since May 18th, which means for a good five months plus. That's all right. But the fact is that six months a girl goes missing in the capital and nobody gets a clue as to where she has gone. And you see, the case was referred to the Delhi police only on 8th of November. And they were able to crack the case within two or three days. What I'm trying to raise is that nobody even knew that this girl has disappeared. Because I believe the parents were not in touch with the girl because they had some kind of a fight because of her on, uh, ongoing live-in live relationship. So nobody even reported the matter to the police i'm just wondering that wherever she was living in meroli did no one even notice anything around uh, the house and i've also asked from the delhi police 
as to whether this man was operating alone or does he have any accomplices because you see it's a well thought out crime how is it that he was able to do it alone and execute something so big alone also i just want to understand from the delhi police whether the girl had ever reported any crime to the police so maybe while she was in a live in relationship with the boy maybe she had raised some complaints against domestic uh, violence or some sexual abuse and what action was did the police take on? because i feel that the matter should be investigated in depth and all the people involved should be given the strongest punishment Aswati, finally, before I let you go, in inter-religious or inter-caste marriages, where girls are cut off from their families, which happened in this case, they are usually estranged. Uh, would you say that we need a mechanism where they can go for help? In this case, for example, uh, neighbors are reporting that they were constantly fighting. The fights had escalated. Uh, the father has said that the girl... The, that is Shraddha was regularly being beaten up. She couldn't go back to her family because the family, I mean, she had fought with her family to be with Aftab. Uh, isn't, there, isn't it then time for India to have a mechanism where these girls estranged from their families who chose to stay with the man they love or don't love uh, can go seek help? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I think this uh, case has really raise this issue on a very large level because you see this girl was estranged from her family and that is why probably because she was living in a live-in relationship maybe the landlord also did not know that she was living there so one has to understand what circumstances did this happen in but I agree that it raises this larger issue as to how should these girls be helped because it is happening across religions it is happening across states it is happening across castes and while there are several ca uh, several cases uh, in which the commission has also helped uh, such uh, couples uh, through the intervention of honorable courts but i think there needs to be a policy level change as to what should be done when such issues happen when the girl is estranged from the family the family is not really attacking the girl or the boy but still she needs some help because at that time if something goes wrong with her there is absolutely no support system it's really shocking because this girl just appeared disappeared in thin air and nobody even realized that is just because there was absolutely no support system for her so i totally agree with you and in fact we've been discussing in the commission that probably there needs to be some kind of a policy to help out such girls where probably they can register with the government body and there can be some help meted out to them Okay, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you, Swati Mariwal, for joining us. Also being joined by Shamina Shafiq, who's an ex-member of the NCW. Uh, uh, Shamina, over my many years as a journalist, you have, of course, covered multiple crimes. And you see, you see stories, you see stories of murder, etc. But, the, you know, this, this is plain diabolical. This, uh, the gruesome nature of this crime is something that one simply cannot get over with. But the... You know, if we just put the shock value to one side, I'm thinking to myself, why did Shraddha not think that she should reach out for help? The fights were escalating. She was being beaten up. I'm fairly certain she had no clue uh, that Aftab would murder her in the way, way he did. But why did she not think that she has a right to speak up a voice to go to the police, if not her parents? Because she was estranged with her parents. Maybe there was some shame going back to them. But what is stunning is the fact that Again, Swati said it. Six months a girl is missing in the national capital. The neighbors don't say anything. The family keeps quiet till November. And all of a sudden, you realize that she has been brutally murdered and chopped into 36 pieces and scattered all over the Meroli forest. You have to unmute yourself, Shamina. Hello? Yeah, I'm unmuted. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I said, first of okay, all, my heart ahead, goes out to the brutality that she was meted out. And my condolences to the family, friends of Shraddha. And at the same time, like Swati said, there are certain points 
if we need to ponder and like you very rightly said that there are mechanisms why didn't shraddha reach out to those mechanisms and said that she was facing problems and you know what this is not just one of the stories unfortunately when girls in the changing time they get into a living relationship they are working and they sometimes live with partners who obviously the parents either don't know or don't they don't approve of they are cut off from their families now there are lessons to be learned first of all families can not and should never actually do this kind of disconnect with their daughters or sons that they don't even know where they live how they live whether they are living or whether they are dead for heaven's sake number 1 number 2 the national commission for women or for that matter the state commissions are there she could have gone very easily and said that look i am facing i am facing barbarism or i i, I mean there i uh, there is uh, brutality which has been meted out to me or i am going under certain circumstances which are okay. unbearable she could have gone I have seen in several cases while my tenure at the hmm. National Commission for Women, unfortunately, girls do not do so for reasons, two, three reasons. Which are, number one, they are not even aware of the rights that they have, of the institutions that exist that they they can go for help apart from the police station. So that means no matter how much time we are spending on Google or on social media, we are still unaware as to. what are the laws or who are which are the institutions which can actually help them number 2 the girls do not have the guts to reach out okay. to these institutions even if they know it for because a i mean they they live in certain isolation because they don't want their families to come to know they don't want the neighbors to come to know they don't want anyone to come to know that they are living such a life because we should remember that we are in india and here living in relationship is not yet approved socially so this is one another problem the second thing that you raised right okay. now that for 6 months where were the neighbors they didn't know that the girl was not there i'm so but this is the harsh reality of metro city especially you don't know who is living next door you don't know what are the family you don't know where they work you are so busy in your own life that in the morning you go out to your businesses or your offices you come back you socialize with your own circle you don't know who is living next door whether one is alive or whether one is murdered okay. or whether facing a brutality it's this is the harsh reality what, so you know what, what is, is stunning is not just the way in which the crime has happened shamina ji what is also stunning is that for 6 months no one had a whiff of it we leave it there for the moment thank you very much for joining us on that note i'm slipping into a quick break on the show our election special from gujarat is coming up next to stay with us